All right, I'm back again. This is my 7,500 watt Chinese inverter. It's not entirely Chinese, just, it's just the board here came from China. Uh, this kind of inverter board requires that you supply your own transformer. Uh, if you look at my previous video, I explained a little bit of detail on that and getting this set up on the bench. Uh, if you uh, are interested in these inverters, I highly recommend you do a bench test first before doing anything serious like this. Although I'm not quite doing full power just quite yet. Uh, so I'll just walk through my setup here. This inverter runs on 48 volts uh, nominal uh, DC and uh, will boost that to whatever voltage you want depending on the transformer. The transformer that I got is this guy here. This is an Acme Electric Bust, Buck and Boost Transformer. Really it's just a standard transformer that it kind of falls in this category of application of Buck and Boost and that's if you have bad line loss in your area. If you're supposed to have 120 volts or 220 volts or whatever coming to your uh, building. But because it's far away from the infrastructure, there's uh, a lot of sag in the lines and you're only getting 100 or 90 volts or whatever. Um, you use these in a specific configuration uh, to get that voltage up to spec. The wiring diagram is, is a standard like kind of uh, double coil transformer. And it really is a general purpose transformer. It doesn't have to be used for buck boost. That's why it's rated for 7,500 volt amps. Uh, then I'd show you the name plate, but it's uh, underneath that. I had to rotate that thing around to wire everything up nicely. Uh, it can do much higher than 7,500 volt amps when doing this uh, function of buck and boost. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, that's not really for most people. Uh, and that's not, also not my field. I do have an electronics background. This is like kind of like a power electronics uh, kind of electrician, industrial electrician kind of thing. Uh, I got this transformer off of Amazon.com, uh, unbelievably cheap, I don't know how, or some, somebody lost money on this thing. It came a little bit dented, but that could have happened in the shipping. And it's just like damage down here. It's a waterproof uh, transformer, it's meant for outdoor applications in snow and rain. Uh, normally they're about a thousand US dollars and I got this for under 300 US dollars. Uh, which makes this whole project kind of more worthwhile to pursue. If you have to end up paying $1,000 for this, then I'd recommend just, just buy the 12,000 watt uh, trans uh, inverter from Jack Rickard at EVTV because that, that thing seems to be legit. I've had a lot of bad luck in the past with Chinese inverters uh, and that one seems to be good to go and that's I think from Sinopoly. Uh, anyways, uh, let's just get going with the, the layout. Uh, what's powering this is a Tesla battery pack. These things are becoming more common. Uh, uh, all over the place as uh, more people wreck Tesla cars. Uh, these modules came out of a Tesla Model S uh, from an 85, uh, some kind of 85 uh, uh, kilowatt hour battery pack. It's not actually 85, that's not the point. And I'm using the existing BMS that's, uh, that came with the car and enabling that is this uh, Arduino Dewey from uh, EVTV. I made my own shield based on uh, the schematics uh, that were available at the time. Uh, again, this that was a lot more work than I thought it would be. I'd recommend just buying the kit uh, from uh, Jack Rickard. I'll post the link in the description. I have contactors here, a kill switch, pre-charge resistor, uh, 400 amp DC fuse, and other little fuses here as well. I currently have this thing hooked up to a single solar panel with a controller up on the roof, and that's kind of trickle charging this thing as I go as well. Uh, and that's just being held on with these alligator clips just because it's still kind of a work in progress kind of test thing going on. Uh, so there's the, the computer monitoring the battery pack. Currently I'm at, uh, let's see, there it is, 46.5 volts. Oh, has, that video doesn't look very nice, does it? And I'm pulling out. Uh, putting in 30 watts, but that's with the uh, transformer, uh, sorry, the inverter hooked up to it as well. The inverter is hooked up and it is, it's not turned on, it's not enabled, but it is powered on. And all I gotta do is click the switch to enable the inverter. It'll make a humming sound. Uh, I have it going through those breakers and I have a current meter that's fell, fallen asleep on me um, to monitor the amps coming out. And I have this set up as split phase. So normally it would output 240 volts, and it does output 240 volts, but the I center tapped the, the two um, 
uh, sorry, the, the center tap of the transformer I've connected to each other and to ground, both earth ground and uh, neutral. And then I have some uh, filter capacitors down there with the feedback transformer for the uh, inverter. And uh, so yeah, so the DC goes in there and down there, the AC comes out there. Uh, so the big thick wires uh, for this uh, uh, 7500 volt amp transformer and little tiny wires coming out. Uh, there's four of them, two of them are joined together back on there on the ground lug. Uh, and then I go from my feedback transformer and then into my breaker box. I have uh, some breakers in there and I have it set up. So I have 120 volts coming out and I've just temporarily wired it up to this outlet right here. And just so, yeah, but the ground is earth grounded. I have a tie going to my main back box back there, but just the ground, nothing else is connected to the grid. And currently just as a demo, this is currently what the grid looks like on a oscilloscope that's made out of garbage. Uh, I have a voltage divider set up with those lights over there. And so we got a nice smooth sine wave, again because this oscilloscope is a little on the cheap end, it's clipped off, that's why I'm using that voltage divider to bring that down. We, even with a times 10 probe, it still can't show the full sine wave. It'll, because I'm just slightly under a 120 volts, I'm actually at 117 volts right now with this, and I can uh, change that to anything I want really. Um, it shows up much more nicely, but you'll see it, it, it's a perfect sine wave, but it's got a little bit of noise on it, and that's I've taken out some capacitors to reduce the current draw. So I'm going to unplug this from the wall and plug it into the inverter, which is turned off right now. And it has a nice ramp up feature. So that's another thing. That ramp up feature might screw up a lot of appliances and electronics. So I would recommend uh, if you're going to use something like this with the ramp up feature. Um, I rec do recommend to use the ramp up feature because it c you can get a big surge current to magnetize that big transformer. Um, but you shut off your breaker uh, when you're doing that. And then if you're going to power off your inverter, power off the breaker first. And that way, as far as your appliances go, everything's standard and normal. And so what I'll do is here, I'll just watch this and I'll flip the switch. Here we go. You should hear it actually, it should show up on the sound, you hear a humming sound. There we go. And so there's my lights on. That's what the sine wave looks like. There's a, there's a little bit of noise, but generally that's a really nice sine wave. And to, that's a pure sine wave inverter. That's pretty much as good as I think uh, I'd ever need to get. To contrast that and to give it a bit of clarity, I have a 1500 watt shitty inverter right over here. That's a high frequency inverter. It's a modified sine wave apparently. Uh, because really, I, I don't think it's much of a modified sine wave at all. It's more of like a just a chopped up square wave, and uh, it says 1500 watt on it. I, I think you can do 1500 watts with like something like a tea kettle, but if you put something with any kind of switching power supply uh, or any kind of uh, you, you, you can put a, a 300 watt motor on it because it has a surge current, this thing will just shut off and start beeping at you. It's so crap. I can't stand these high frequency inverters. They're cheap and that's that's about it. And it's good if you're all, all you're gonna do is a laptop and a tea kettle and a cell phone. And if you're on your boat or RV, that I guess that'll do the job. But if you want to power up more substantial things like a pressure washer or an air conditioner uh, or a microwave, you're gonna need pure sine wave. Okay, so I'll just unplug that from here. There we go. And I need two hands for this. Gotta plug that into there. And then turn that on. There we go. And then that's the shitty sine wave. That's, I wouldn't even call that a sine wave. It, it's in a, a, a vague. It's just you got you got your your high voltage there. I guess it's 120, and then zero, and then negative. It's not 120. That's that's whatever your peak voltage is. It's kind of an approximation, I suppose. It, it does a job for, for simple things, but that's about it. So I'll turn that back off, it's stupid. Anyways, okay, so what's next? The next thing is amps, all about the amps, because that's what this is all about. That's another multimeter somewhere falling asleep. There's my voltage coming out on the out. Uh, so yeah, I'll do another video uh, to see what kind of amps this thing can do without blowing anything up. Stay tuned. Just wanted to add a couple other point outs. 
before continuing on. So uh, that's the inductor uh, in here. And yeah, I put some tape on it. Uh, this is thermally conductive tape for heat sinks. The reason I did that is because when I first tested this thing, uh, this is what it did to its original wrapping. It just kind of toasted it and melted. So they, they told me that this thing's rated for 150 amps up to 200 even. I don't believe it can do 200, but for sure 150 uh, if he cools down properly. It is a it is really big and beefy, but it's still smaller than what these are for. Um, so that's that's what's going on there. So I have it bolted in there just so it's secure and not gonna hit anything. The other thing I'm gonna add, I added surge protection in here. These are MOVs uh, suitable for uh, 240 volts and 120 volts. Uh, I put put those two in series. Uh, uh, with the system uh, that are then connected to neutral. And they're in parallel, so I have some redundancy in there, and they should last a very long time. And that will prevent any kind of uh, surges, spikes, anything like that, harmonic resonance. Things that electronics don't like. I learned that the hard way after blowing up that little adapter there. Its internal uh, MOVs, they kind of uh, detonated after one time abruptly shutting down the uh, the connection while this thing was still on and I don't know what happened but it didn't like it and it kind of shorted everything out and I was, was ready to give it up but I was able to repair it and so it's working now uh, but make, making sure I have everything uh, upstream kind of protected and if these things short out and blow up they'll blow, they'll blow the breaker or they'll detonate and ha it'll be a nice fireworks show and I got some spares they're, they're not expensive I feel bad for people buying these things to protect their house against lightning and things like that uh, because those lightning surge protectors are really expensive, but really that's that's all that's inside them are these things. Uh, so uh, I don't know. This thing won't protect against lightning. I wouldn't wouldn't trust it against that. But any kind of noise spikes that this thing can do, I think, are taken care of with that thing. Uh, that's it. Let's move on. Okay, that's uh, continuing on. Right now I'm doing a 8.8 .8 amps AC on the 240 volt line, and I did adjust it to be 240 volts. I've got my other LED on the control board there, that means it's on. If that thing's blinking, generally it means it's off and something's wrong. The one LED there just means there's power. There's other LEDs there that indicate under voltage and over voltage, and I don't expect to ever need them. I'm right now doing about 51 amps DC, and my USB might have crapped out again. Let's see if what we can do about that. Oh, there we go. So again, this kind of concurs. Uh, what the heck? This thing's really sensitive to noise. It's only started doing this in the last second or so. Okay, you know what? I'm going to come back to this. Okay, so anyways. With that uh, load, I've lost a little bit of my sine wave purity. But don't wait, <laughs> just wait, there's, there's more. So I'm gonna crank this up to the maximum. Uh, I've just calibrated the, uh, that op amp down there. There's the surge current and the continuous current. When the output goes to 0.5 volts, this thing shuts off and then gives a fault. But if you don't come up quickly and turn off the breaker, it'll power itself back on again. Uh, normally it wouldn't be an issue because whatever was pulling that much current probably should have turned off and stayed off. But in this case, my load will just keep powering it up again, and I don't want to keep oscillating like that. So um, what I've done is just ramp down the current, and um, uh, yeah, so here we go. So my, the fan's running. This thing is a reasonable temperature. My inductor is damn hot. I'm not sure what to do about that. I, I think I have to kind of put it some uh, epoxy on it or something, some high temperature thermally conductive epoxy, which is actually kind of hard to find. Uh, but for now, I got some uh, thermal tape on there holding it on, and I bolted it to the inside of the transformer. It's kind of a makeshift heat sink, although it's not working very well. Uh, okay, so what else do I got to tell you about? Uh, yeah, got the voltage, and I uh, just wish this USB was working properly. Uh, and there we go. Oh, we got numbers being updated. All right, so here I'll just go and walk. You can come walk with me, and I will bring up the test load to the maximum that I've tested it with. That, and if I go any higher than that, it'll shut off. So in this case, I'll set this to 23 amps, and that's the highest I can go. If I go to 24 amps, it turns off, and there's a reason for that because the DC amps is what the limitation is. 
uh, if that DC amp sits 150, uh, huff to 150, it shuts off. And right now, I'm about 143, and the test load over there doesn't have the resolution. It can only increment by one amp AC, which will then bring it over the limit. It'll probably be like 151 amps or something like that. And that's fine, uh, but it's still humming along nicely at 142 amps DC. And this thing's crapped out again. Control Shift M. Yeah, it's a little bit off. It's 136 amps. Uh, that's okay. It's not, not that important. The voltage is what's important as far as this BMS goes and the temperature. Uh, the temperature is. Where are we here? Temperature alarm off. I'm sure the viewers have found it by now. And I'm just kind of sweating here in the heat, trying to run around and make sure not, nothing catches on fire. And I just want to see the temperature. There we go, in Celsius. High and low of uh, 25 and 24. Right now there's no coolant going through these, and that temperature is just fine. Uh, the coolant is really just actually heater fluid because you can't let these things freeze. Let's see, okay, what else can I show you? Oh yeah, so you see here the sine wave. It's gotten quite a bit worse, but this is kind of under extreme conditions. Uh, and it's still more or less a sine wave. It's probably gonna have some harmonics in there, but something like a microwave or a furnace or some kind of other uh, thing that needs a sine wave, I don't think it's gonna care that much. Um, it'll, do, it'll get the job done. It's not gonna be like a modified sine wave or anything like that. Can't beat the price, that's for sure. Okay, so I think I'm gonna shut this off uh, and just let these batteries trickle charge with the sunlight. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.